Okay, hello. Uh, welcome to my talk. Um, my name is Chris Cummins and I'm going to be talking about Compiler Gym. So uh, first thing I'd like to say is that this is the, uh, the work of many. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the contributions from my fabulous co-authors uh, at Meta. Um, but also this is an open source project that I'll be talking about. Um, and there have been uh, many fantastic community contributions that, uh, that I'd like, uh, like to thank. So today, we're going to be talking about machine learning and compilers. So why do we care? <laughs> uh, well, because if you can uh, get an optimizing compiler to produce better code, then everyone benefits. You, know, you can produce faster binaries. That means your users are happier. Um, you can, uh, let's say, shave the energy consumption of your programs, which can reduce the amount of power needed, uh, which can save lots and lots of money. Um, and it has this nice effect that uh, you know if you can if you can improve a compiler, then every bit of code that that compiler generates can be improved. Now the downside, of course, is that tuning an optimizing compiler to uh, to get as much performance out of it as possible is a very difficult task. This has often been considered the the realm of uh, compiler experts who will spend hundreds or maybe even thousands of hours uh, tuning through trial and error and uh, expertise, um, individual heuristics to try and get. As, uh, as much performance as, uh, as possible. But the downside of this is that uh, even then, it's still no guarantee that they, uh, that they get all the performance that's there and there's often performance left on the table. So what we're trying to do instead is we're trying to cast the tuning of compiler optimizations uh, as a data science, as a machine learning problem. Um, the, the kind of benefits would be that uh, not only can it do a better job than uh, humans tuning things by hand, but more importantly, we've taken the human out of the loop, so we're no longer dependent on our compiler engineers having to pour enough man hours into every single optimization to get the best performance. So the way it works is that uh, you've got some program, like a piece of code that your compiler is optimizing, and you need some way of representing that as an input to a machine learning model. So typically how you might do this is you might lower that program down to an IR, and then uh, let's say count properties of the IR. It could be say the number of instructions in the program, you know, the depth of your loop nests, the density of arithmetic op operations, that kind of thing. And the idea is if you can get enough different programs and extract their features and then figure out for each one of those programs what was the best optimization decision, you know, the best parameter that you could have made for that particular program, then you can take that as training data and then to uh, use supervised machine learning to learn a model that can correlate uh, those features with the optimization decision that produced the best outcome. The idea is if you can do this, then your model that you have built becomes your optimization heuristic. So you embed that inside the compiler, and then when a new program comes along, all you have to do is you need to map it into that feature space, and then your model will tell you a prediction for what it thinks will be the best optimization decision. Now this is all well and good, uh, but there's kind of an unfortunate downside to this, which is that it isn't the reality isn't as simple as I'm making out here. Uh, and then in fact, you'll find that if you look through these compiler papers uh, that are in this area, they often hide under the covers a lot of work. So how does it actually, how does it, uh, the reality of compiler research actually look? Well, let's say, you know, I've got some brilliant idea for uh, how I can use machine learning to improve a particular compiler optimization. Well, that's great. But now I need to, you know, set up my experimental infrastructure. So I need a compiler, and that means, uh, you know, you need to figure out the APIs for that particular compiler. Compilers are frighteningly complicated and typically millions of lines of code, so that can be an uh, intimidating task. Um, then you need your data sets, the things that you can actually learn over. So that means getting a bunch of benchmark suites together. Um, they're typically all like packaged it separately and none of their build systems work and <laughs> you end up having to patch these things just to get them to run normally half the time. Uh, and then you need to, okay, so you need some way of building your feature extractors. So, uh, you know, combing through prior work and trying to figure out exactly the details of how they implemented their feature extraction, which is often isn't open source, or if it is, it's targeting some older version of the compiler and needs updating. And then you need to glue all of these different kind of scripts and plugins together to form some sense of an experimental infrastructure. Uh, by the time you've done that, you, you know, you get to plug it in and run your experiment. And it turns out there's a bunch of bugs, so you've got to debug them, and then it's a whole lot of faff. And then hopefully, in an ideal world, you, you know, the idea, you get, you get to the point where you actually persevere enough that you can try out your idea uh, and actually get your result, and hopefully that's a positive result. 
So it's, it's a lot of work. Now, the thing is that in other domains for machine learning, like in uh, natural language modeling or in, uh, let's say, like image recognition, it's, there's often like prepackaged data sets and models and frameworks and tools and libraries that really means you can much more quickly get from idea to result through rapid iteration. But these don't exist for the compiler research community. So we started to think, what if we could build that missing piece of infrastructure? And that is what we have done with CompilerGem. So CompilerGem project has three goals. The first is we want to lower the barrier to entry to AI for compilers. We want to make it as easy as possible for researchers to start playing around with real compiler problems. And we want to do this so that we can advance the state of the art in AI for compilers. We genuinely believe that uh, you know, the future of optimizing compilers will be through uh, machine learned optimization heuristics. And then thirdly, uh, our goal is we want to provide a set of common benchmarks by which you can compare different machine learning approaches on the same compiler optimization tasks. So what we built is uh, something that looks like this. And, and basically what we're doing is we're packaging up compiler optimization problems as, uh, and exposing them through the reinforcement learning loop. So what that does is it takes a, a problem, let's say like in LVM uh, uh, pass ordering, and it, and it uh, encapsulates it inside an environment. Now an environment is this little uh, object which exposes three things to the user. One is an observation, which is uh, some view of the state of a piece of code. So like, um, so this could be like a feature vector representing your program. It could be a graph representing your program. It could just be the source code or like, you know, the IR of the program. And then the second thing it exposes is a reward signal. So this is, a, let's say like, it could be like a runtime or a code size signal, which indicates how good or bad a particular optimization decision was. And then the third thing it exposes is an action space. So the action space is the set of optimizations that this environment supports. So what are the choices that the user makes? And then your goal, and you can do this in whatever approach you, uh, you do so choose, it doesn't have to be reinforcement learning. Um, your goal is to pick an action from that action space that will lead to the greatest cumulative reward. And this process iterates uh, until the environment says that you have reached some terminal state. So just a couple of things to point out at this, uh, this stage. So this is uh, built on OpenAI Gym, which is a very, very popular library for exposing all kinds of problems for reinforcement learning. Um, it's very flexible. It's a Python library. It lets you write your agent uh, in Python, which is you know the lingua de franca for uh, machine learning. But also it lets you, because it has this straightforward interface, it lets you plug in um, like there's libraries and there's agents that other people have uh, implemented for you that you can just drop into an existing environment. Second thing is to say that we operate on the principle of least surprise. It is a Python library. You will get Python data types. There's nothing funny or specific about compilers. Uh, if you're getting, you know, if you're dealing with numeric feature vectors, you will get NumPy arrays. If you're dealing with uh, graphs, you will get network X graphs. And we try and make it as straightforward as possible. And then finally, um, I just want to point out that this interface is self-describing. So it's very important to us that it means that you can uh, anyone can interact with these compiler problems without knowing anything about how that particular compiler is implemented. Uh, so no expertise or you know, background in that particular compiler is required. Okay, so what are the environments that we currently have? Well, we've got three that we ship at the moment. Uh, the first is LVM um, phase ordering. So this is kind of a classic optimization problem. The uh, phase ordering problem is given a set of optimization passes and LVM has 124 of them, uh, which pass should I run on a particular piece of code such that it will give me the greatest improvement in runtime or code size? We support optimizing for both. The second environment we have is uh, command line flag tuning. So that is from the full space of command line uh, options, and the, the space is truly enormous, uh, pick from is the set of command line flags that will produce uh, the smallest programs. Um, so the action space here is a 500 dimension tuple. Uh, and then our third environment is uh, the loop tool compiler, which is a, a, a compiler problem which exposes loop nest code generation tasks for uh, CUDA. Um, and for each of these different environments, we uh, expose a range of different observation space types. So for example, you could ask for the IR of the program as a string, or you could ask for different feature vectors. So we've, we've implemented a bunch of different feature extractors based on past compiler research and embedded them inside CompileGym so you can just ask for it and it will go ahead and give you the feature vector. 
We've also got things like pre-trained embeddings if you want to do some language, uh, natural language learning, um, or like uh, graph-based representations if you want to do some like GNN. Um, and we are uh, adding to this list uh, as time goes on. So how do you actually use it then? Let's look at a code example for how you interact with the gym. So we're starting here with, uh, with the Atari uh, breakout environment. So what you do is you say, um, I want to, uh, I want to cr construct an environment, an instance of this uh, problem. You get an observation from the environment and then you step through the environment. Now a step is taking a particular action. So after every time you take an action, you get a new observation, new reward, uh, and the environment tells you whether you're done. So in this uh, particular code, simple, you know, for simplicity, we're just picking a random uh, action at every step. So uh, you would see the little paddle there just going back and forth randomly. Um, but that's where you would plug in a uh, DQN or some uh, deep reinforcement learned approach or uh, you know, whatever technique it is that you want to try out. So what we did is we built compiler gym in such a way that you can just change the name of that environment to let's say LVM. And now all of a sudden, your code is now uh, manipulating a compiler. So uh, it actually goes beyond this. It's not just a case of dropping in compiler problems that's uh, you know in, in place of the existing environments. We also added on new APIs for dealing with compiler tasks. So for example, like an obvious thing is we need an API in which you can load in your own program that you want to optimize. Uh, and then similarly, an API by which you can dump out the, the optimized program once you are done manipulating it with it. Uh, manipulating it. So this is so you can integrate uh, your compiler gym agent into uh, a build. So because we are uh, implementing this very uh, popular and straightforward interface, we can drop in uh, various different like RL frameworks that are built to target the gym. So for example, in here we're using RLlib. RLlib is a nice library that gives you uh, implementations of a bunch of different state-of-the-art reinforcement learning algorithms. In this case, what we're doing is uh, in you know, 15 lines of code, we are training an agent to do uh, LVM phase ordering uh, using proximal pulse optimization. And Ray is a fantastic library that gives you all these things like tensor board logging and uh, all sorts of debugging and fantastic things just straight out of the box. And it's simply by changing things about the environment, like for example, asking for different observation spaces, you can experiment and see how, like for example, how does the choice of program representation affect the ability of a reinforcement learning agent to navigate or to optimize uh, these LVM programs? Or how does changing the benchmark, the program that we're optimizing, affect the performance of these agents, testing the generalizability? Or we can just let's say uh, RLlib has, I think, I think it's about 40 different uh, reinforcement learning agent algorithms built into it. So you can just ask for a different one and then evaluate how these different agents or how these different algorithms, sorry, perform on different optimization tasks. Now, there's nothing saying you have to use reinforcement learning. Uh, Jim does not require you to do RL. So, for example, in here, what we're doing is we're showing you how to integrate this uh, with Nevergrad, which is a library of black box optimizers. Um, so things like genetic algorithms and a bunch of different state-of-the-art techniques for doing gradient-free optimization. And what we're doing here is in a handful of lines of code, we're saying to Nevergrad, okay, here is our function, which is the LVM phase ordering problem. Go and minimize it. Uh, you know, go and find us the best sequence of, uh, of optimizations for this particular program. Um, or you could just you know, roll your own algorithm from scratch. So for example, here is uh, an implementation for how to do a greedy search. Uh, and uh, here we've got an implementation that shows you how to do a hill climbing search. Really, it is entirely up to you whether you want to, let's say, use some off-the-shelf reinforcement learning tools or black box optimization tools, or whether you want to get really stuck in and write your own algorithm. So there's a bunch of extra goodies built into uh, Compile Gym. So I'll just give you a very quick overview of a few of the uh, important ones. First is that we have command line uh, interfaces for almost everything so that you can do uh, a whole bunch of experimentation with these kind of optimization problems entirely without having to write a single line of code, uh, which is quite nice. Um, the other thing we've got is uh, we've got uh, results validation. So once you have run your reinforcement learning agent and it has navigated through an optimization space, the environment can then validate itself. By that, I mean check the semantics of the program to verify that the, the or sorry, to validate that the program has not changed. So you're comp to make sure that your compiler hasn't you know, silently broken the semantics of your code. Um, this is really useful for finding uh, bugs in compilers um, and, or, or, or just things where like the compiler is non-deterministic. 
Another thing is we've got is we've got a set of public leaderboards. So uh, once you have built your agent or your approach and you uh, you've got your set of results, submit it to our to our GitHub repository and we will feature you so you can uh, show off your work and uh, you will link to a write up of your approach. Okay, so I just want to spend a couple last couple of minutes just talking about quickly about the architecture of Compilegem, so the kind of internals. I'm not going to go into much detail, but just at like a high level overview, the way that Compilegem works is we've got this kind of separation of concerns built on, uh, we've got a front end and we've got a back end. So the front end is the is a big Python library, and that's the thing that the user interacts with. So that has all of the user facing APIs inside of it, uh, things like you know the way in which you manage data sets, the way in which you uh, expose an actual gym environment. It's got a bunch of stuff for doing things like uh, handling errors or recovering from errors, um, uh, any support for parallelization distribution. That's all built inside this front end, um, and then things like the command line tools. And then uh, you've got a backend, and the, the way that these two talk to each other is through this compiler service interface. And it's a quite a small interface, there's only six methods. Um, but what it does is it lets you, it, it kind of exposes in a compiler agnostic way what are the, uh, the operations that are needed in order to expose a compiler problem for reinforcement learning. Um, and so what you do is you write one of these backends to target a specific compiler. So for example, we've got the LVM compiler service. Uh, and this is written in C++, and this is a compiled binary compiled against the LVM APIs. And it does it's the thing that actually does the talking to the compiler um, and the thing like the feature extraction. And the idea is you can just drop in these different backends and then all of the, the kind of boilerplate of doing things like error handling and all the user-facing APIs, that can be just reused from the front end. So we've made it as simple as possible so that you can plug in your own compiler here. We've got an example in the GitHub repo which shows how in uh, in fact, uh, it fits on one slide, I can show you. Uh, here is the bare bones of what you need to do in order to add a new compiler to uh, Compilergen. So what you do is you subclass from this thing called the compilation session. And the compilation session abstract, like uh, it represents a single compilation instance of a program. So what you do is you need to say, here is a list of action spaces. And that is the things that, you know, the choices that our compiler supports. Here is a list of observation spaces. So that means what is the list of feature vectors that your compiler knows how to compute. Um, and then you've got three methods. You know, one is start, uh, which says, okay, here is a new program, or we call them benchmarks, that we are now beginning to optimize, uh, beginning to compile. And then we've got two operations. One is apply an action. So that means take some optimization decision. And the next operation is compute some observation. So compute some feature. And if you fill in those five blanks, you can get then a uh, compiler environment. So we have, uh, this is, I'm showing you here the Python implementation or the Python interface. There is a, an equivalent C++ interface or you could use a, a language of your choice. So where are we going with this? Um, well, just uh, in terms of what we are doing with building out the environments, what our goal is we are steadily increasing the size of our search bases. So for that we are digging deeper into the compiler. So at the moment we're looking at uh, what I would describe as somewhat modest problems, like for example, uh, like high level choices, like phase ordering, choosing what optimization to run when. So in this case, our, our, you know, our search base is only uh, 10 to the 200. Um, uh, now, what we're going to, planning on doing is we're uh, increasing the granularity of control of our environment. So we're now starting to look at individual loop level optimizations. And then the idea is once we've done that, we're, ne we're then going to extend or expand the scope even further to every single like instruction level optimization decision so that we want to eventually be able to control uh, any time that our compiler has to make a choice we would like to be able to expose that uh, through our reinforcement learning environments um, so just to recap then uh, i think the comp you know machine learning for compilers is, is a fun field like there is a lot of room for impactful work but there is this high barrier to entry so we've built Compilergen, and that is a library that reduces that barrier to entry to just a pip install. Um, so we've tried very hard to make this a kind of batteries included, you know, all singing, all dancing toolkit. We want to be the one-stop shop for all machine learning compiler research. Um, we are actively developing it. Our roadmap is, uh, is quite thorough. <laughs> Please uh, give it a go and um, let us know how you get on. So thank you so much for your time. <laughs>